PC, accounting for your future. Hello, this is Steve from APC and welcome to this ACCA paper F7 financial reporting revision topics. Um, I know that some of you have prepared this particular paper perfectly, but some of you may not. So in this particular phase, I'm going to revise a few topics which may pop up in the exam quite, I mean, frequently. So you won't feel alone. And also I'm going to maximise the efficiency as well as the effectiveness of revising this particular paper. F7 is tough, really, but it's not that particular tough if you're going to study with us. And one of the key topics that we're going to revise today is related to something called the goodwill. So, according to the, I mean you have to remember this, according to the IFAS number 3 business combination, there are two ways that we can calculate the goodwill. But it's not that important from the F7 exam's perspective, maybe more, maybe more relevant in the P2. So, what I tend to do is well, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the goodwill. How does that work? So, for example, if you are going to buy another company, so this is the target company and this is your company. So, if you buy another company, you are going to pay for other company for $100 with the net asset or the equity, which is the asset you can touch in the target company in the SFP, I mean, you can obtain that SFP in the target companies for the equity, total up, for example, $80. Uh, this means you are going to spend $20 more than its net tax actually worth. So that $20 of premium is called the goodwill. To reflect the fact that you purchase the target companies, all of those uh, tangible or can touch, uh, I mean, as well as some of the intangible assets recognize the SFB, but those equity, you, uh, I mean, for example, you uh, obtain 100% of those uh, net tax of the target company, but instead of paying it at $80, but I mean, you have to negotiate with the shareholders. The shareholders in the target company say, well, you have to pay for you for 100. So if that is the case, you can think about it this way from the accounting's point of view, is this, well, because it's actually worth 80, but you pay for 100, because you think after the acquisition of the target company, you can use its reputation of the target company as well as the customer base, uh, of the customer list, for example, to generate more economic benefit. And that economic benefit is worth about 20. So that's the reason why you're going to recognize it in the non current asset into uh, the consolidated account of 20 here. So here's the thing. Well, um, Here's the chicken bit. Well, the goodwill, why do they call it as the goodwill? Well, I must say to you that goodwill is the ending balance. So if you don't believe me, just to see the uh, T accounts for this. We've got debits as well, credits. Fine. And because we pay 100, so we're going to credit the cash of 100. So we credit cash and debit the goodwill. At the same time, with the net asset, uh, because as you can see, we acquired that net asset and we pay for 100, so we debit the equity to reduce the subsidiary's equity in order to become our goodwill. So we debit net asset and credit the goodwill. So as you can see, the debit is higher than the credit, so the balancing figure would be the goodwill that pops up into the non-current asset under the intangible asset of the consolidated SFP only, consolidated balance sheets if you prefer. That's it. I mean, in later sections, we will introduce a lot more complicated scenarios where you're not going to acquire 100% of the subsidiaries, but maybe we're going to acquire only 80% of them. If that's the case, how are we going to account for the good thing? 
Also, some of the goodwill impairments that might exist, the different treatments under the IFRS number three for the full goodwill and partial goodwill. Of course, we will look at those uh, in a second. So, happy studying, and um, I mean, more importantly, is the best of luck into your upcoming paper F7 exam. APC, accounting for your future.